Hey guys, today we're going to look at modeling with exponential growth and decay, section 6.7. So exponential growth and decay happens whenever you have a situation where the rate of growth or the rate of decay is um, proportional to the size of that quantity. So this gets used in simplified population growth models, continuously compound interest, radioactive decay, and a bunch of other things. And in all of these things, we use this equation. A of t equals a sub 0 e to the rt. Now a sub 0, you can read that as a sub 0, or sometimes it's read as a naught. And I'll probably call it a naught most of the time. But anyway, this equation gives us what we need. And you might, you might notice it's a lot like the... Um, uh, continuously compounded interest uh, equation. With that, it was a equals p e to the rt. Well, here we're just instead of calling it a and p, we're calling it a, a of t and a sub zero. So a of t is the amount of whatever it is you're dealing with, money or radioactive substance, whatever it is. a of t is the amount at time t, and sometimes we write that just as a. The um, Let's see, a sub zero is the initial amount at time zero. And one thing about time here, time can be measured in seconds or years or any other thing. So you have to pay attention to the problem to see what the what, what our time unit is. Let's see, r is either the growth rate if it's positive or the decay rate if it's negative. T is time. And E is the, um, the constant, the Euler number. 2.71828, uh, In reality, if you know 2.718, you're, uh, you're good. Your calculator can supply the rest of that. So let's look at an example. The uh, population of a city is growing exponentially. Population was 100,000 in the year 2000 and 103,000 in 2004. Let's find the growth rate and use it to find the population in 2010. Okay, so what we want to do here is um, I'm going to write out all my things. A, A naught, R, and T. So notice this is broken into two things. First it says find the growth rate R. Alright, so our A is um, 2000, uh, in 2004, A is 103,000. And A sub naught, that's what we started at, was 100,000. And T, all right, we've got to look at this and see what they're saying. Um, going from 2000 to 2004, that's four years that have elapsed. So, this A up here, I could have also called this A of 4 if we wanted to. So we just need to put all this into our equation and solve. So we get 103,000 equals 100,000 e to the 4 r. And now this is an easy equation to solve. Divide both sides by 100,000, you get 1.03 equals e to the 4r. Uh, take the natural log of both sides. And so r then is equal to natural log of 1.03 divided by 4. Now I'm going to do that on my calculator, and I'm going to leave it in my calculator. When I do this, I do ln of 1.03, close parenthesis, that's important, divided by 4, and I get, I'm going to put a squiggly equal here because I'm going to truncate this, 0 0.0073897, etc. Now, I'm actually going to leave that number with its full, um, full decimal expansion in my calculator. That's the um, that's the answer to the first part of this. Now the second part it says use it to find the population in 2010. 
Now, there are actually a couple of things we could do for this. Probably what I would do is just say my equation here is a of t equals 100,000 e to the r t, where r is this number over here. I'm not going to rewrite it in my uh, equation. But we want that, and for, so for 2010, in 2010, t is equal to 10. Why? Because we started, the a sub 0 was in 2000. Now, if we wanted to, we could, we could do it slightly differently. We could, instead of putting 100,000 here, we could put 103,000 starting in 2004, and then we would use t equals 6. So you could do that, and it would work, but I, I prefer to just keep the same starting time for the, the entire problem. Okay, so all we have to do here is do a of 10 equals 100,000 e to the 0 0.007, etc., times 10. Now, what I'm going to do in my calculator, I've got my, I've got this number here for my r. I'm going to store that as x. So it's called x. I could store it as r if I wanted to, but it, you know the name doesn't matter. And then I'm just going to do 100,000 times e raised to the 10x. That way it'll substitute that in without me having to do it again. And it gives me this number for my population. So for population, it would probably be best to round to the nearest whole number of people. So this is 107,670. We round up. And a lot of the problems that we do in this section are going to wind up being this sort of thing. Uh, we'll have to deal with this equation up here. And a lot of the times we'll have to solve it twice in one problem. Solve it once to find the rate and then once to find either um, a of t or maybe to find the t that we need. So I'm going to stop this video here and do a few examples in the next one. But the main thing to take away from this is memorize this equation.